so vocabulary part two an expression is any group of terms so any polynomial any monomial any binomial those are all expressions there should be a comma in between here and here as two different examples those are both expressions terms are grouped together by adding and subtracting so the first one there, 4x plus 7y, what kind of polynomial is that? Do you remember from your definition? The 4x plus 7y. What, is, what kind of polynomial is that? One with two terms. A binomial, like a bicycle that has two wheels, a binomial has two terms. And an equation, an algebraic equation, has an equal sign. So when you make one expression equal to another expression, you make an equation. So in that example, we have one binomial, 4x plus 5y, equal to another binomial, 6x minus 9a, and that makes it an equation. So an equation has an equal sign, an expression doesn't have an equal sign. Now, combining what we were doing with our, like, our idea of grocery bags and putting apples together with apples, Putting together our like terms is called simplifying in math. So if we can combine our like terms, that's called simplifying. Later on, we'll look at substituting variables in. Let's say you work. Does anybody have a job outside of school? I do. Okay, so Abe's working his job. One day he works. One day he works three hours, and the next day he works five hours. Okay. But we don't know. We haven't asked Abe how much money he makes. So we're going to say... We make X the cash that Abe makes per hour. The first, day, the first day he works three hours, how much money does he make? I don't know how much he makes per hour, but I can say that he will make three X, three times X, because X is how much he makes an hour. The next day, he works another five hours, so that day he's going to make five times X, however much money he makes per hour. In total, how much money is he going to make in total? Well, 3x plus 5x is 8x. Now, if Abe's making minimum wage, minimum wage right now is $11. So he would have made 33 plus 55, or $88. That's a lot of money for the So now, substitution, what substitution means is if we know that x is equal to $11, then 8x is the same as 8. And when we substitute it in, we put it in brackets where it was. So where the x was, we put 11. And 8 times 11 would be 88. So sometimes we use algebra before we know a value, and then once we figure out what that value is, we can substitute it in. And this kind of math, if you've had a job, you've done before. Because you count up your total amount of hours, and then you multiply it by how much you make per hour. So we have the expression 3x squared minus y minus 1. It's an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign. In that expression, there are three terms, and you have to solve the following questions. 
Can you see them or are they a little small? Maybe I said one of the answers, if you were listening. Okay. So who's coming up first? On video later on, you guys are all right. And it appears that Ryan might also become an art teacher uh, in the future. So we're still working with 3x squared minus y minus 1. I'll write it up here so you can still see it. The coefficient of the second term is negative 1 because our second term is the y. And there's a negative in front. And any time no number is written, you imagine there's a 1 there. Like you can imagine, even though it's not there, you can imagine a 1 in front of that y. And so the coefficient of the second term is negative 1. For e, the constant term, we'll go through, we'll go through them all. Well, I'll go through that when we get to the degree. For the constant term, the constant term is the term by itself with no variables. The one that is no variables is the one at the end. And because there's a negative sign out front, we would write negative one. In this expression, there are two variables. The variables are x and y. The exponent of the second term, again, this is the second term. When you have a variable without an exponent written, you can imagine there's a little 1 there. So the exponent of our second term is 1. And finally, to figure out the degree of a polynomial, you look at the degree of each term in the polynomial. So our first term, the degree of 3x squared is 2 because the degree is adding up all the exponents in the term. And there's only the squared is the only exponent. In the second term, the y, the degree would be 1. And in the third term, there is no variable, so the degree would be 0. Then the degree of the entire polynomial is if you look at each individual one, which is the biggest one, it's the 2. And so the degree of the entire polynomial is 2. So in these examples you came up with, notice that all of them have three terms. Guys, sit down, Jayla. Quiet, please, guys. Okay. Notice that all of them have three terms. We can tell. We, we can tell they have three terms because there's something plus something plus something or Every time there's adding or subtracting, that se separates our terms. So each of these examples has three terms. That makes them trinomials. That would be a starting point because we know we have to have a trinomial. Each of our trinomial needs to have four variables. The first one has an A, an X, a B, and a Y. The second one has an A, a C, looks like a B, and a D. This one has an A, B, and a capital B and a C. And this one has a C, an X, a B, and a Y. And this one has an A, a C, a Y, and a B. So each of them has four variables. So we have done this part in each of them. They also each need a constant. A constant is a number by itself. The number by itself without a variable in the first one is a 2. Then we have a 9. Then here we have, I believe this is supposed to be a plus sign, plus 1. Here we have a plus 3. And finally, we have a plus 3. And finally, we need a degree of 5. To get a degree of 5 in a trinomial, you look at all three terms, and you figure out the degree of each of the terms. This has a degree of 5. This has a degree of 2. A constant always has a degree of 0. So the biggest one is the 5, so our first one has a degree of 5. Oh. Our second one, this has a degree of 5, this has a degree of 3, this has a degree of 0. So the biggest one is the first one, it has a degree of 5. In the third one, this has a degree of 5, this has a degree of 3, 
This is a degree of 0. Which is the biggest one? The, the first one. Zero? The constant always has a degree of 0. So the whole thing has a degree of 5. Here, 2, 2, and this y has 1. This would be a degree of 5. This has a degree of 0. And that's a degree of 0. So the biggest one is the 5, and so it has a degree of 5. You will get a question like this on your quiz on Friday.